This is a spoiler-free review, everybody. I don't do spoilers in my reviews, as you know, unless it's like a TV show discussion. So, spoiler-free ahead. Well, this is one of those reviews that could go either very good or very wrong, depending on how people agree with me or disagree with me, however you want to put it. But I was nervous coming out of this to review it. This is, this is a tricky one, so let's do this. Star Wars The Force Awakens. Alright guys, gals, and everything in between, so after a long time between the last installment of Star Wars, which was Episode 3, and now Episode 7, it's been a long time. Star Wars Episode 7 is directed by J.J. Abrams this time around, not George Lucas, and it takes place after Return of the Jedi. Two characters, one played by John Boyega and the other played by Daisy Ridley, they end up being caught up in this whole civil war, and they have to fight dollar store Darth Vader. There's a movie there. Let's get to what I liked. What I liked was the action was absolutely stellar. J.J. Abrams knows how to film action, and he definitely did a better job than George Lucas in conveying action in this film. He was able to make it feel lively and real, like you were there, like you're you're flying around in those X-Wings, and when all of a sudden things or lasers are happening and there's explosions and cool and things like that, like Abrams will put you in like the cockpit with the camera, so it's almost like a POV perspective, like what I liked about In the Heart of the Sea. And there will be these perspectives where all of a sudden, boom, it's right next to you, and you're like, whoa, I am in Star Wars right now. That was really cool. The setup of this film was also really cool. Until you realize that you can predict the entire movie about six minutes in. As I said, I love the intro of this film. The intro of the film is great. It gets you all set up. And as someone who's not necessarily a huge Star Wars fan, I was actually getting pretty excited. Like, it was pumping you up. There was a cool action scene, and it was getting showing you the feel of what it's going to be like. And then all of a sudden, I was like, I know Act 1, 2, and 3 of this film, and this is what's going to happen where, and this, and this, and this, and this, in my head. And I said, okay, this is going to be the entire movie. And guess what? It was. This movie is predictable to a T. Um, the storytelling is weak, although Star Wars hasn't had the best storytelling to begin with from any of the saga. It is a pretty cookie-cutter story. But it is the same story, is the problem. So I'm sitting there going, yeah. Every single one of these things is going to happen, and it's going to happen in this order. And cue what's going to happen next in 3, 2, 1. Cue reference in 3, 2, 1. And it's one of those things that it's a by-the-numbers safe film. Like, they didn't take risks with this movie at all. They quite literally just said, okay, we are going to release a Star Wars movie, fanboys are going to say it's perfect, and it's going to make a lot of money, and we're not going to care. That is the problem, is J.J. Abrams did what he could in terms of directing, making it compelling. And there's certain characters that just are completely pointless. I'm looking at you, Captain Phasma. Then there's other characters that, like John Boyega's character, I did not care about him. When push came to shove, I did not care. I was sitting there going, yeah, whatever, do your thing, I guess. Like, I didn't care about John Boyega. The character that, that absolutely shined was Daisy Ridley's character. I forgot her character's name because it's a weird name. But her character was the best part of the movie. And it wasn't even that her character was very delved into. In fact, it wasn't. But... I, she was the most compelling part of the movie, and Oscar Isaac. Honestly, if John Boyega just got the boot out of this whole film, and it was Oscar Isaac and Daisy Ridley, it would probably be a better movie, because Oscar Isaac has that enthusiasm as an actor that John Boyega just didn't really do. I mean, he did a good job. Boyega did a good job. But at the same time, he didn't stand out in any way, other than he's just sort of there. Like, you know the, the everybody gets a trophy kind of thing? Yeah, thank you for participating. And it was just, it wasn't that good. There are certain arguments that people would want to be made. Well, Scott, you've, you've vocalized before, you're not necessarily a huge Star Wars fan to begin with. All right, 
that's a good point. But at the same time, the person that I went into on this film, that I saw the movie with, has never seen a Star Wars movie before, knew nothing about Star Wars, and went in with the freshest of minds, and walked out and said, well, that movie was stupid and boring. And this movie is boring. I mean, when there are some action scenes that happen, and they are amazing, and I love them. They're the, my favorite part of the movie. They're great. J.J. Abrams did a great job with that. But there are chunks of this movie that are like 20 minutes even, where it's like, they are just boring. Like, nothing happens, and you just want it to end. Harrison Ford tries his best, and honestly, it's one of the best performances Harrison Ford has done in a while. That isn't saying much, because every single movie he's in, he just goes, please let me leave. This one, he at least tries a little bit, so I, I gotta give props there. Um, but other than that, guys, this wasn't that good of a movie. It was stupid. The plot is generic. It's, it's the same movie you've watched already. Like, just go home and watch the original trilogy. It's the same movie. And it's not like they're trying to hide it. So before all the fanboys say, well, how dare you? This movie's so original. It's not, because it's what your Bible was made off of. It is that simple. Adam Driver as discount Darth Vader, I mean Kylo Ren, he had no purpose. He was boring, he overacted, and it just didn't work. I didn't care about him, and I didn't even, like, I, I was sitting there going, oh yeah, he's in the movie. That's right. And I shouldn't say that about the villain. Darth Vader is one of the best villains put on screen in general. I mean, for most people he is. But this guy just pales in comparison. He is not good. He was a boring villain. He was Nero from the reboot of Star Trek. That being said, um, I honestly, you know, all of you are gonna go out and watch this movie, or you already have. I'm not gonna sway you, but you came here to hear my opinion, so I have given you my opinion. So what I will say is that Star Wars The Force Awakens, I'm not gonna garbage rating it, but I will say, you could enjoy it at maybe background noise. While you're looking at better science fiction, you could have this on in the background on like Netflix or Hulu, and like would just have it as background noise. And then occasionally when you hear an explosion, look up and go, oh wow, that looks cool. That is really about it. All right, guys, gals, and everything in between, hope I didn't upset you too much. And some of you, if I made you happy, congratulations. But please do not forget to like and subscribe. I've got plenty more videos coming to you.